Hello, my name is Josh Whitlow, lead pastor of Purpose Church, a new church starting in Goodyear, Arizona in early 2023. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about our mission, our vision, our values, and last week we started a new collection of talks where we're looking at the spiritual journey that God has for each of us. It starts off with knowing God, and today we're gonna to be talking about the next step in our spiritual journeys. But as we get started, I got a question for you. Uh, do you, have you ever had a dog or an invisible fence? Or do you know anybody who has an invisible fence? Now, uh, I have a friend who had a dog who had an invisible fence, and the first time the dog tried to get out of the front yard, it was shocked, and it learned its lesson. In fact, it got to the point where that dog was so scared to even get to that line, they didn't even have to put a collar on that dog which is crazy. I mean, think about that dog. That dog has one bad experience with that fence. He doesn't even get around it. He doesn't even have a collar on him. And now he won't even get close to that fence, even though he was free. Even though he was free, he didn't even know it. Now, some of you, you may be into dogs and you're thinking anybody who has an invisible fence is a terrible dog owner. And that conversation is for another time. But there is a part of all of us where we can experience freedom, where we want freedom, where we can be free, but even though we're free, we don't experience the freedom that we want to experience. The next step in the spiritual journey is we wanna help people know God and we wanna help people find freedom. Why? Because God created you to be free. Now, when I use that term free, I'm not just talking about a physical freedom. I'm talking about a spiritual freedom. I'm talking about a mental freedom, an emotional freedom. Let me ask you this question today. What is something that is holding you back? For many of us, it could be worry. Worry is saying uh, that I have to have control because I don't want to give control to God. For some of you, you may be struggling with anger. Anger is saying, I need to put this in control because I don't believe that God is going to rectify the situation. Some of you, what's holding you back today is guilt. It's something you've done in the past that you can't let go of. Others of you, you're experiencing hurt. This is something that someone did to you that you can't let go of. For some of you, you're being held back by addiction. This is the thing that you run back to time after time after time when you get stressed and you know it's not healthy, you know you shouldn't do it, but you keep running back to it. Now here's the problem. All of us have had some form of something holding us back and in fact, there's probably something holding you back today. Some of you, you have a drinking problem and you know that you have a drinking problem and you want that to change. Others of you, you know that you should stop smoking, but you just can't stop. Some of you, you're sleeping with your boyfriend or girlfriend. You know that it's not God's best, but you can't stop doing that either. Others of you, you're holding on to something in the past and you are bitter and the bitterness isn't worth it. You want to get past it, but you can't. Odds are you have something today that is holding you back. It's that prayer request that you keep praying for over and over again. It's that New Year's resolution that gets brought up every single January 1st, and by January 4th, you haven't done anything about it, and you've fallen right back into it. It's the secret that you should tell someone about, but you're too scared to share it. It's the place where you deeply and desperately need to find freedom. All of us have something that's holding us back. And when we're held back by these certain things, here's what it makes us feel. It makes us feel frustrated about where we are currently because we can't do what we want to do. And it also leaves us feeling hopeless for the future because we don't feel like anything is ever going to change. At Purpose Church, we don't want you to feel frustrated. We don't want you to feel hopeless for the future thinking that it has to be a replay of the past. In fact, we believe that everyone deserves to live the most fulfilling life possible, and that happens when we find freedom from what's holding us back from the life that God has for us. Now, here's the sad part. 
the vast majority of Christians and non-Christians alike. They live far less free lives than they could and they should. We let the addiction control our lives and and can end up ruining our lives. We let the fear cause us to miss out on what God has for us. We let the worry miss out, uh, cause us to miss out on the power of today. We allow bitterness to ruin our relationships. We keep running back to the sexual sin that feels good in the moment, but causes regret and shame. If you felt any of those feelings, if you're currently feeling any of those feelings, it doesn't have to be this way. God has something different for you. At Purpose Church, we want to be a church that helps you find freedom. We want to be a church that helps you live a fulfilling life. We don't want anyone to miss out on the life that God has for them because they keep coming back to the same old sin or the same habit over and over again. We're here to help guide you into the freeing life that God has for you. As a church, how do we help you find freedom? Well, we want to give you a couple steps today through scripture that can help us take a next step in finding freedom and really defining what our church is all about. In 1 John 1, 9, it says this, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Now, here's the thing. Only God can forgive sins. Confession to God is vital. In fact, that is the first step in following Jesus. If you've never taken the first step in following Jesus, the first step is saying, God, I'm sorry for my sin. I want to follow you. Although confession is important, it doesn't mean that whatever you are confessing won't happen again. Just because you say, God, I'm sorry for this fill-in-the-blank thing, doesn't mean that that fill-in-the-blank thing can't happen in the future. So the question is, What's the point of confessing? One, we confess so that we can be forgiven by God, but how are we not only to experience the forgiveness of God, but the freedom that God wants to give us today? Well, in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says this, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Did you catch that? It didn't say confess your sins to God and you will be healed. It says, confess your sins to each other and you will be healed. We confess our sins to God for forgiveness, but we confess our sins to each other to experience healing. Now, some of you hear this and you're like, Josh, you're crazy. It's hard to confess to God how in the world am I going to confess to others? Like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to go get a billboard out and just confess my last 10 sins? Am I supposed to go on social media and apologize to everyone because I had one too many drinks at the bar last night? Or am I supposed to, you just let everybody in my contacts know that last night at 3 a.m. I was watching porn? Or am I supposed to let all the people in my life know that I was not patient with my kids and I yelled at them for not picking up their stuff? Is that what I'm supposed to do? No, I'm not saying that you need to list out the deepest and darkest sins on this comment thread. I'm not saying that you got to go through all your email lists and every person on your email list and let them know what you just did last night that you shouldn't have done. No, you don't have to tell everyone everything, but you need to be telling someone everything. Why? Because God created us in community. And in order for us to find the freedom that we need, it not only takes us connecting with God, but it takes us connecting with each other so that we can keep each other accountable, so that we can pray for each other and help people take a next step in finding freedom. We go to God for forgiveness. We go to God's people for healing. Surrounding yourselves with the right people is one of the most vital things you can do in taking the next step of finding freedom. Why is that? Because the people who surround you shape you. If you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Your friends determine the direction and quality of your life. We need to cultivate life-giving relationships where we can take off the mask and where we can be real with others so they can help us on our journey. You see, God won't heal what you're not willing to confront. For many of us, 
We take these secrets, we take this wound, we take this anger and this bitterness and this jealousy and envy, and we say, there is no way I can share this with other people. So we keep it inside of our hearts. We don't talk about it. It festers within us and we never truly live the free life that God wants to give to us. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 19 says this, A mirror reflects a man's face, but what he is really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. I mean, this is so obvious. You've heard this ever since grade school, uh, you know, when your parents told you you shouldn't hang out with Billy because Billy was a bad influence. Uh, This is so obvious, but you're influenced by the people you're closest to. Your relationships are going to influence your decisions. Now, if you're looking to find freedom today, if you're looking to live a fulfilling life, if you're looking to live a free life, who you are surrounding yourself with is going to determine the freedom that you experience. This isn't just about spiritual freedom. This is anything when it comes to your life. If you want to be fit, hang out with people at CrossFit who work out. If you want to be financially uh, strong, hang out with people who are further along and know how to create a budget. If you want a better marriage, don't hang out with the person who's been divorced seven different times and they've only been married for two months. Hang out with the person who's been married to one person for the last 50 years and grab dinner with them. As a church, it is our goal to create spaces through groups where you can connect with people to learn more about God's word and also share what's going on in your life. The way that we help people find freedom is by encouraging and challenging them on Sunday morning to learn more about God's word so they can know what's happening in their lives and in their hearts, but also to connect relationally with other people. It's my dream that our church can be a family together where you build friendships and connections with each other who are headed in the same direction as you and will help you take a next step in following Jesus. The way that we are going to grow closer to Jesus is by connecting with each other. The most fulfilling life is found in following Jesus. So if you've never taken that step, that is the next step for you. Look at God, confess your sins to him and say that you want to follow him with the rest of your life. That's the first step in following Jesus. After you've taken a step to follow Jesus, I just want you today. I want you, here's the next step. I want you to identify one area of your life where you need to find freedom. I don't know what it is for you, but pick one area. And I want you to take a bold step today. I want you to take a courageous step today. I want you to identify that issue. And I want you to share that with someone close to you. Say, hey, I got this thing going on in my life and I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy about this certain thing and I need help in this area. Would you help keep me accountable? Would you follow up with me maybe on a weekly or every other week basis and and ask me how I'm doing? Would you be open for a phone call uh, each week and I'll let you know how I'm doing? You see, identifying the issue in your life that you wanna grow in is half the battle. The other half of the battle is creating a plan, understanding that the Holy Spirit wants to help you in that area. So whatever area of your life you're struggling with, ask God for help, but also ask God to help identify people in your life that are going to help you with it as well. I mean, could you imagine what would happen in your life if through God's Spirit you overcame the bitterness, the anger, the worry, or whatever thing is holding you back from the freeing life that he has for you? Could you imagine the sense of peace and freedom that you could wake up with tomorrow if you got that area of your life figured out? Not because you're perfect, not because you can do it through your own willpower, but because through God's Spirit, he's working in your life and through the people who help you as well. Could you imagine living in a society? Could you imagine what would happen in Goodyear, Arizona if people lived a freeing life? If people found freedom from the addictions of alcohol and drugs and pornography, if people could get away from the addiction of comparison and social media and all of the different things that are tripping us up, what would happen in our communities, our neighborhoods, our schools, our marriages, with our kids? What would happen in our life? if we found freedom today. Purpose Church, 
We want to help you find freedom. We want to help you live the most freeing life possible. Why? Because God created you to be free. So take the next step today. Identify an area of your life where you want to grow and identify one or two people that you're going to connect with this week and ask them to help you grow in that area. If you want to be part of a church that's excited about helping people know God and find freedom, we would love to help you get plugged into Purpose Church. You can find any information at PurposeArizona.com. You can sign up for updates there. You can also financially invest by giving to God at PurposeArizona.com. And if you have ever have any questions, shoot me an email at joshw at PurposeArizona.com. We are so grateful for you. Next week, we're going to be diving into the third uh, aspect of the spiritual journey, and we can't wait to connect with you then.